you might be wondering why I'm riding a road bike on GMBN. Well, don't worry, don't turn over just yet. There's a perfectly good reason, I promise. For a long time now, bike brands have been making bikes for across a multitude of disciplines. And for Villa Triestina, they've been making bikes for over 110 years, and they've decided to throw their hat into the XC ring. So I thought, well, what better way to warm up for an XC shred it than to go for a little road spin? So I think, oh, that hanging around. It's probably time to get to the trail center. Let's go. Mm, that road bike's a beauty then, but let's go for a spin and see if a road bike brand can make a mountain bike that lives up to their road bike heritage. Villia then. Well, they've been in the mountain bike game a little bit, first making mountain bikes back in the 90s. However, since then, it's mainly been about the road bikes. Until now, they've come up with this, the brand new Villia Triestina Urta SLR. And what a beauty she is. And thank you very much to them for sending this one through. I am going to give it a good old fashion and put it through its paces. Classic GMBN epic? Not today. Bike packing? I mean, it's far too pretty for that. I've got it, a shred it. But before we do shred it, let's take a closer look at the bike itself. So here we have it then, the Villia Triestina Urta SLR in all its beauty and it's bang on for a modern XC bike. A size medium frame without the shock will weigh a respectable 1730 grams. Uh, like I said, without the shock and the numbers are bob on too for a modern XC bike. It's a 69 degree head angle a 453 mil reach and a 74 degree seat angle on this, the size large that I am riding. Travel, well that's 100 mil front and rear and there's actually some really clever frame designs that have transferred over onto this bike from their road bike making knowledge. First up, let's take a look out back and down around the rear brake area then because that's a standard flat mount for the rear brake. Now this kind of tech is usually found in the road world but it's creeping over onto mountain bikes more and more. And what that does, well, it's lighter than your standard post mount and also allows for an equal amount of flex on the back end too. Moving forwards, the frame fits two water bottle cages in it. So should you be heading out for a heck of a long time then you can easily take enough fluid with you. A really clever design idea they've done on the frame is made the linkage bolts all exactly the same size bearing. So if you buy a spare bearing kit, one bearing fits all when it comes to replacing them. Around the shock, they've also integrated the mounting to add stiffness to the frame. Now XC bikes can be notoriously lightweight, but with that comes flexibility, sadly. So by doing this, Villiers say that they actually add some stiffness, lateral stiffness to the frame. Moving forwards then is this beautifully slick one piece carbon bar and stem combo that they've got going on up here. Now this weighs only 285 grams in total and well look at it, it is pretty bloomin' fancy and it's no doubt going to get the heart rates up of a few XC racers out there. Off of this bar and stem, well, the cables feed nicely into these integrated ports just in the top of the head tube there where everything's held nice and neatly inside the frame. Final spec then, well, as part of their all guns blazing approach, this thing is dripping in fancy parts. Full SRAM XX1 group set, Fox 32 step cast, factory forks up front, Mike K1 carbon wheels and Richie WCS carbon seat posts make this quite the race weapon. That's enough about spec sheets and numbers though. What we want to know is can those that make road bikes make off-road bikes? Well, there's only one way to find out, to the trails. Let's start with climbing them because, well, you've got to get to the top before you can shred it back down. And well, if you're looking at getting one of these things, whether you're racing or mashing out the miles on your Sunday rides, then you're probably going to be racking up a fair few meters of climbing. A modern XC bike, well, it should feel planted and nimble on the climbs all at the same time, all whilst transferring that power to really get you up to the top. 
When the going gets a bit smoother on those climbs, I can use the dual lockout lever to make that suspension as firm as possible so all the power is really driving me up the hill. This is also helped as well by that steeper seat tube as well, shifting my weight forward, driving through the pedals. And the longer reach as well means that my weight's kept over the front so that I'm not looping out when it gets really, really steep as well. Louis, our cameraman behind the lens there, has bet me a fiver that he reckons I can't get up this steep bit of hill on the Urta and uh, with no run up to start with as well. So I think there's only, there's only one way to go. You're a meanie, Louis, but well, let's have a crack. You ready for this, bud? Here we go. Ah, oh, no run up. Oh my Lord, it's steep. Ah, oh, come on. It's so, ah, oh, ah, yes. Oh. You owe me a fiver, Louis. The Urta smashed it. Victorious. Ooh, okay, okay, climb and done. And that hill was an absolute stinker. Steep, tech and challenging, but we're at the top and that means time for a rest. Only joking, time to drop straight back in. Now, roadies descend, but then it's not quite the same, is it? So is this gonna be the Achilles heel of the Ursa? Well, there's only one way to find out. Drop it. Holy moly, good job. Oh, this thing's got a slacker head angle now. Otherwise I think this would be pretty wild. Whoa, coming down here is wild on an XC bike, but the longer reach on the stem and the slack head angle actually mean it's still pretty fun and the suspension's really capable too. And so much fun, I'm going up to hammer through it again. Finally then, we've ascended, we've descended just, and what a descent it was. But how does this thing handle your everyday trail center, the chatter of braking bumps, and uh, the really worn in trails? Well, onwards, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Riding over the rough ground of your average trail centre, bikes need to be supple and have the ability to absorb all those small bumps and little vibrations that can otherwise make it really uncomfortable. An active suspension platform and compliant components will really help here as they take the sting out of the trail. It's not just the ability to absorb bumps though, XC bikes still need to be efficient, surging forwards under every pedal stroke as if going for the win, even when chilling. This can also be achieved by using a dual lockout on the suspension, so firming up both shocks for maximum power transfer. Again, all with just the flick of a lever. Oh, done. So then, the ultimate question, can a road bike brand make a mountain bike? Well, yes they can. Villa Triestina's latest Urta SLR cross country bike, well, it's pretty flipping good. Not only does it turn heads, but it smashes it out on the trail as well. And do you know what? I think I'm gonna go smash more miles on it. So I shall catch you next time, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Happy riding, and I will see you later. Toodles.